Hello, Ty Unruh with Generation Chosen. I uh, wanted to share what the Lord was speaking to me this morning. This should be just a short video, but when I woke up this morning pretty early, He, he began to minister to my heart um, and reveal to me what He's looking after. You know, He was um, speaking to me about hearts that are after Him. Uh, the preciousness of a longing heart toward Him, a heart that is seeking after Him. It's, um, it's, it's like I felt it was like a treasure more precious than gold, or this gold that Revelation chapter 3, verse 18 speaks of. I counsel you to buy from me gold that has been heated hot and refined by fire so that you may become truly rich. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I wrote this down. Um, when I was thinking about this, I wrote, A heart after the Father's heart is more valued in heaven than all else. Oftentimes, it is valued very little before men, because men value gifts. Men exalt the gifted above. Men exalt the gifted, but the Lord will exalt those whose hearts are passionate for him. You know, and this is how I perceived or felt what the Holy Spirit was revealing to me, how he's moved by hearts that really desire him, that are thinking about him throughout the day. That, I mean, we, we don't have to be where we want to be to be seen by him. But it's important for our hearts to be longing for him and wanting him and after him our hearts desiring him. You see, none of us are perfect and none of us are where we truly want to be with the Lord. We're in, we're in the process. We're making progress by the Spirit. Now, you know, I, I don't know everyone's circumstances, but life is difficult. There's a lot of different things in life that hit you. What the Lord is saying is that the preciousness even in the midst of everything that's going on, the preciousness of a heart that is desiring him and after him. And he sees it. He sees it even if you're busy and you don't have time to pray, but you're groaning within yourself and your heart is moved because it wants to be with him. That's what he's looking at. That's what he sees. And that's what's precious to him. So, Second Chronicles 16.9, this is the Amplified, it says... For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the whole earth so that he may support those whose heart is completely his. See, he's looking for the hearts that are completely his, that are fixed on him, so that he can come and move upon their behalf. And I'm telling you, what's valued in heaven is a heart after the Lord, desiring Jesus. You know, men only oftentimes, oftentimes only look at the external. We'll look at this gift of prophecy operating or look at that gift operating. Why? Because it can be seen by other men, because it can be acknowledged by other men. So we equate value to people that have giftings. Now, there's nothing wrong with giftings. I'm all for giftings and prophetic giftings and gifts of the Spirit. That's good. But there's something wrong with it when we value people by a gift that they've been given instead of what is within. A longing heart after the Lord. You see, the, heaven judges things very differently than the earthly. And, you know, many who are first now will be last in the kingdom of heaven. And many who are last now will be first in the kingdom of heaven. Many who are exalted right now in the church with giftings and ministries and are seen before men and are exalted before men, many of those will be last in the kingdom because of this right here, where their heart was, where their heart truly was, where their heart really is inwardly right now before the Lord. But many who are last now in this life, meaning they're not seen by men, they're nobodies, they're people who pray 
and, and there are people who get before the Lord. There are people who desire the Lord in the secret place that no one knows about, no one hears about, no one sees publicly, but heaven sees and Jesus sees. And, he, and he's the one who judges rightly. And he is the one who will put those people who are last in this life first in the kingdom first for all eternity first they'll be first place when they go to heaven so we can see through scripture i'm just quoting the bible that jesus judges very differently than men the lord looks within and that in fact that's what he told david and we're or he told samuel and we're going to get to that in 2009 oh, I was really exploding in the kingdom, you know. I really started exploding in 2008, 2009, beginning of the year February. Um, uh, a man by the name of Leif Hetland was ministering in a ch church where I was at in Montana. And he had a, a associate with him, spiritual son with him, who was, who was praying for me. And the Holy Spirit wrecked me. It was one of the first times I've ever been wrecked like that by the Holy Spirit. I believe I was would have been 20 seven years old at the time I'm 40 now and um, I was completely wrecked by the Holy Spirit and he prophesied over me he prophesied over me a number of things and one of the things he told me is that he saw three keys go, the Lord parting three keys to me this is why I'm being wrecked under the power of God and what the first key said it was a gold key and it was the key that David had to the father's heart and then he said they saw a silver key go into me which is the apostolic anointing which will come in time in a third key that uh, he didn't know what it was and you know I was in a place where I was really pursuing God and just the simplicity of his presence and I did stay there for a time even after that but there came a time then maybe the 2010 time frame somewhere around there where my focus started to shift a little bit, started to shift from, you know, the, the, the gold key, right? The, the, the key that David had to the father's heart, more to looking towards that, what, what was that second word I got? Oh, the, the silver key, the apostolic anointing that's coming. I, had, I started to shift my focus a little bit too much to ministry and too much to that other thing. And that was a mistake. It was a it was a it was a great mistake. You know, there's a reason why the first was a gold key. Because it was gold. It was more important. It was the priority. It had to have preeminence. And it's the heart, a heart that is after the Father, a longing heart that is after the presence of the Lord to be before his face. If you look at that word in the scripture, face and presence is the same thing. When you're in the presence of the Lord, you're before him. So when we're talking about feeling the Lord's presence, we're talking about being right before him, being before his throne in the spirit. That's what we're talking about. In close proximity to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so I begin to shift my focus back in 2010 around that time frame. And it took a number of years, you know, for the Lord to bring me back and bring back my pure focus upon him. And I think there will always be going through purification, you know, always be the removal of the, the self-life and there'll be a continual stripping so that our focus is more pure on, upon him. And that's good. We're going to be going through that for the re remainder of our lives here. So I guess, I guess the lesson here is that the Lord wants me to say is that the value of heaven, the value of the Godhead is a heart after him, a heart longing for him. And that is preeminence. That is the preeminence. We must keep it there at that place of focusing on the Lord and hungering after him and wanting him and desiring him. That, that must take the preeminent spot in our hearts, over all other things, over the callings, over the giftings, over the anointings. All those things are good, but they must be properly put in the proper place. They must be kept in check. 
Scripture says in Acts uh, chapter 13, verse 22 in the Amplified, it says, And when, when he had removed him, talking about Saul, he raised up David to be their king. Of him he testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, conforming to my will and purposes, who will do all my will. See, that's what the Lord's after. People who are after his heart, who are going to conform themselves to his will, his purpose, his plan, and going to bow the knee to Jesus and do his will. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance of his height or his statue, because I have rejected him. Speaking of David's brother, For the Lord sees, not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And that's what I was talking about in terms of, you know, how men judge by outward and by gifting and by performance. And, you know, we'll look at the worship leader and how anointed they are. And people are attracted to, to the anointing and the external gifting. You know, they get the attention. They get, and that's what I, I felt like the Lord was trying to shift me toward, direct me toward was, but what about those whose hearts are completely his, whose hearts are after him, whose hearts are seeking. See, that's what draws the Lord's attention. That's what shifts his attention. That's what he's pleased with. Now, gifted people could have hearts after the Lord. You know, I'm not saying that gifted people, anointed people, people up on the stage, people up on the platform don't have. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there is a lot of that going on in the church. There is a lot of that. But there, there are, I'm sure there are quite, quite a few on a public stage with giftings that do have a heart after the Lord. In fact, I can tell when someone does. You could see it. You could feel it. The Lord wants us to be able to discern that. He wants us to be able to see those leaders, to see those worship leaders, to see those people who are truly after him and hunger for his presence and want to be before his face and are truly ministering unto the Lord and gathering people unto the Lord. The Lord wants us to be able to discern that. You know, the, te the great test in this life is keeping a heart after God through all the disappointments and discouragements and hardships and sufferings of this life. This is the testing. You know, this is that buying of gold refined by fire because we're going to be tested. Just think about your life and everything that's hit you, you know. Everything, how yeah, you thought life was going to be a certain way and it went the other direction. You had all these hardships and difficulties and setbacks and sufferings and breakings and strippings, disappointments and discouragements. And I'm telling you, there is a test in the matter. Is your heart going to stay passionate for the Lord? Is it going to stay burning? And I get it. You know, uh, the things of this world and, you know, we all have our moments where things are hard and we're not like we used to be and, and you know, the, the passion's not there, the hunger's not there. But that's not the end of the story. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit, that's not the end of the story. It's are you going to let the things of this life strip that from your heart? Or, or are you going to come back to the Lord? And are you going to let him ignite your heart with passion and burn for him with a flame and go after him with everything in you and hunger for him? You see, that just means that you, let me rephrase that, it just means that Christ, you allowed Christ in you to overcome all of those difficulties only to make a comeback and come back after the Lord with everything in you, with a heart that was fully given over to him. That just means that you passed the test refined by fire that you purchased gold from the Lord. That's all that means. Yes, we're all going to have setbacks. We're all going to have these moments in life, even years in life. 
and that feel like black holes, that feel like, you know, the dark night of the soul. But we don't have to stay there. We can, we can get a hold of the grace of the Holy Spirit where He is coming back with a vengeance in our hearts, focusing us on Jesus Christ to burn for Him again, to hunger for Him, to want Him and desire Him. So I pray that over you guys. Now, for any of you who are going through a season where you haven't felt the Lord, where... Things are different than they were before. You don't have that same fire, that same burning, that same hunger. Just ask the Lord for it and keep on asking for it. But I just want to break the power of every attack of Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. I break it off of you now. I break the worldliness off of you that's tried to ensnare you. Myself as well. In Jesus Christ's name. I break the matrix system off of you that Satan has tried to bind your mind and trap you in. In Jesus' name. I say that you will overcome. Because Jesus lives in you and he's greater than he who's in the world. Jesus is greater and he is coming forth in you. He is coming back in you. Jesus Christ is reviving in you, reviving your passion and your hunger and your heart's desire for him and his kingdom and his will and his purposes. Jesus Christ is greater than your circumstances. He's greater than your past. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And He is breaking forth in you with the breaker anointing, the Lord going forth, the Lord at your head. He is breaking forth all of the resistance and He is coming forth in your heart now. He is coming forth in your heart. He is bringing back the desire for Him the passion for him, the hunger for him, the longing for him. Lord, restore in them hearts that are after you. Give them hearts that want you and long for you and that are passionate about you, Jesus. Stir it up again. Stir it up, Father. Break forth, Father. Break forth in their hearts. You are enthroned in their hearts, Break forth in Jesus' name, Father. Let it be done. Let it come forth. Your power come forth in them. The kingdom of heaven come forth in them, Jesus. I break every bit of resistance in their lives right now, Father. Let the longing and hunger for Christ be released. Let it flow like a river. Let it flow like a river in me as well, Father. In all of us. In all who will see this video. Let the impartation be released. In the name. And the beautiful, precious name of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ does take notice to your heart. He does. He sees it and it matters to him and it matters to heaven. God bless you guys.